Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to episode 54 of Codenamed Kids Next Door, Operation Elections. We begin this episode with number one reciting a speech to himself that's intended for the students of Gulliger Elementary School. According to this speech, number one is confident that he won the election for the office of fourth grade class president, and uh, he brings up past entries that relate to Gulliger Elementary School in some capacity. The past entries that number one brings up are Operation Robbers, Operation Hound, Operation Food Fight, Operation President, and Operation Snowy. Operation President and Operation Snowing are the most important entries that Number One brings up because the events of those entries are what led to this election happening. More specifically, the events of those entries uh, detailed how the previous fourth grade class president, James Nixon McGarfield, aka Jimmy, changed from a benevolent class president to an evil one. And after Jimmy was defeated, at the end of Operation Snowing, uh, the office of fourth grade class president had become vacant. In the Gulliger Elementary School Auditorium, uh, the fourth grade secretary, Wilson Woodrow, is standing at the podium, and he's giving a speech that's preparing to reveal who the winner of the election is. Number one walks up to the podium, and he is about to formally give his speech. But before number one has the chance to give his speech, Wilson declares the delightful children from down the lane to be the winner of the election, or winners of the election. And number one is baffled to hear this. The delightful children then push number one out of the way, and they stand at the podium and begin to give a speech about their victory. In anger, number one grabs one of the delightful children by the collar and insists that the delightful children cheated to win the election because there's no way that the majority of the students would vote for the delightful children to become the fourth grade class president. Uh, the hall monitors then arrive and they pull number one away from the delightful children and they begin to drag number one out of the podium. The four other Sector V operatives try to chase after number one while he's being dragged away. Oh, and we also see that the six gum gang have joined the hall monitors. Wilson insists to number one that the delightful children fairly won the election according to the numbers, even though the faces of the students in the auditorium uh, say otherwise. Um, yes, and the delightful children continue their speech by saying that their first act in office will be to eliminate troublemakers like number one. Number one is furious that the delightful children are calling him a troublemaker, and he demands a recount while the hall monitors continue to drag him away. The delightful children assure number one that he'll have time to count once he's in detention. The next scene takes us to a classroom where a court trial that will determine if number one will be sentenced to detention or not will be held. Um, number one is silently stewing in anger while some of the student reporters are bombarding him with questions. And the four other Sector V operatives are sitting in the uh, audience uh, seats of the court trial. Number two comments about how unfair it is that number one got a raw deal, but number five assures number two that number one's lawyer will be the fifth grade kids next door operative, number 150 an hour. Number 150 an hour is supposed to be very skilled when it comes to being a lawyer. Unfortunately, the judge for this court trial is revealed to be the delightful children. They're wearing a they're wearing a judge costume that's big enough for all five of them to wear. Number one is angered when he sees the delightful children will be the judge, and he's about to begin a rant when number 150 an hour calms him down and assures number one to let him, number 150 an hour, do the talking. 
Number 150 an hour uh, politely and calmly begins uh, to defend number one. However, number 150 an hour only manages to get a few words of his introduction out before the delightful children declare number one to be guilty and uh, declare a lifetime sentence in detention for number one. Number 150 an hour is notably angered by this, but he still keeps his composure and he still calmly and politely, even if angered, or yes, even though he's angry, number 150 an hour still calmly and politely tries to argue um, with the decision. But the delightful children uh, accuse number 150 an hour of being out of line in their words. And they use this as an excuse to begin a rant about how the fifth graders think they can push the fourth graders around all the time. And so the delightful children declare uh, that as the fourth grade class president, they will declare war on the fifth grade. This causes most of the fourth and fifth graders in the, uh, in the classroom right now to begin fighting with each other. And uh, number four wants to join in on the fighting, but number five drags number four away, and uh, the four present Sector V operatives have to figure out a way to help number one out. The next scene takes us to the detention sector of Gulliger Elementary School, and it resembles a prison. Number one is in a cell by himself with, uh, it's a very bare bones cell, essentially. Runt of the six gum gain, uh, walks up to number one's cell and sarcastically apologizes for the lack of decorations, but comments about how resourceful and creative the Kids Next Door operatives are when it comes to Kids Next Door 2x4 technology. Number one attempts to reason with Runt to uh, let him out of his cell, saying that the delightful children had cheated to win the election, and there's no telling what the delightful children will do uh, in the office of fourth grade class president. Runt comments, though, that with the delightful children being the fourth grade class president, that means the six gum gain will have, uh, will have uh, complete access to the front line of the cafeteria at all times. And uh, they, they, the six gum gain, just have to uh, make sure that number one doesn't escape the detention sector. And Runt says that's good enough for him. He doesn't care what else the delightful children plan to do. And then he uh, walks off after he uh, dismisses number one's chance or number one's attempts to reason with him. After Runt leaves, uh, someone else tries to get number one's attention. Uh, this individual is in the cell next to number ones, and this individual is holding a small mirror in their hand. So they're, uh, yes, their arm, their arm is sticking out of the uh, cell bars, and um, and the individual is angling the mirror so that the um, so that number one will get to see the face of the individual who's trying to talk to him. We see that this individual is none other than Wilson Woodrow. Wilson says that number one is right about the fact that the delightful children cheated to win the election, and Wilson claims that number one is the uh, rightful winner of the election. Uh, number one is the rightful fourth grade class president now, according to Wilson, or that's what he claims. And Wilson uh, admits, or yes, Wilson admits that he was the one who was supposed to count the, um, count the number of ballot votes. And Wilson admits that uh, the delightful children had promised him a piece of their birthday cake if he uh, claimed that the delightful children were the winners of the election. Number one is angered when he hears this, and he points out that the delightful children weren't even uh, running during the election. And Wilson admits that it was foolish of him to uh, believe the delightful children's false promises. And uh, he also admits that the delightful children thanked him by uh, framing him for tying the shoelaces of Muffy Jenkins together, and they gave Wilson um, a lifetime sentence in detention. Number one simply says that Wilson deserves this for uh, going along with the delightful children's plan to cheat during the election. But Wilson tries to reason with number one that they need to escape from detention because the delightful children have a plan that they're going to set in motion very soon. This catches number one's attention, and he inquires Wilson about what this plan is. 
Meanwhile, uh, we head to the office of the fourth grade class president, where we see the delightful children are monologuing to themselves while planning, or yes, they're monologuing to themselves about how their plan is going so far and the next steps of their plan. So the delightful children manage to get the fifth graders to surrender by cutting off their, the supply routes for their milk money. And the delightful children say that, uh, continuing to monologue to themselves, the delightful children say that with the combined might of the fourth grade and fifth grade classes, they will uh, eventually make the first, second, and third grades surrender. So they'll have control over all the grades in Gulliger Elementary School. So the delightful children turn on the speaker to make an announcement and uh, the delightful children uh, lie. They claim that the first, second, and third graders declared war on the collective fourth and fifth graders and uh, the delightful children will, um, will retaliate with this war by uh, uh, having the fourth and fifth graders fight back. So some of the students do seem to go along with this. Some of the students uh, seem to enjoy the prospect of uh, fighting back against the first, second, and third graders. Number four wants to join in on the fight too, but number five uh, pulls number four away from uh, joining the others in the fight, and number five points out to number four that the delightful children are purposefully uh, pitting the uh, elementary school students against each other, or the different grades. They're pitting the different grades in the elementary school against each other for some reason. And they do need to figure out a way to get number one out of the, um, they need to get number one out of the detention sector quickly. Number two points out that no one has been able to escape from the detention sector before, but they still need to come up with something if they hope to stop the delightful children's latest plan. So later on, we see number four and number five are sitting in a classroom together with some other students. Um, all of the students are listening to a lecture from their teacher. Uh, whispering, number four tries to get number five's attention and says how, or yeah, he tries to request a piece of gum from number five. Number five points out that they could get sent to detention too if they're caught uh, in class uh, chewing gum. But number four insists that he needs something to keep him from growing bored. So number five uh, agrees to give number four a uh, piece of gum, but only one piece. When number four tries to reach for the gum, however, Lunk of the Six Gum Gain uh, catches them and he grabs the gum. Uh, Lunk points out about how chewing gum in class is not allowed. Number five tries to uh, assure Lunk that she merely intended to give number four the gum for after school. Um, but Lunk still doesn't believe them, but he doesn't bother to send them to detention. Instead, he just decides he'll confiscate the gum for himself, and he begins to chew the gum. And then after class ends, Lunk and the other students leave. But we see that number four and number five give each other a knowing smile, and then they give themselves a, they give a subtle high five to each other. So in the detention sector of um, the elementary school, Lunk walks up to number one cell and uh, he just, uh, he has a, yeah, he has a, he has a container of some mush-like food and uh, he scoops them up in a spoon and he just tosses it on the ground for number one saying how it's lunchtime. Number one though inquires if Lunk has any gum on him. Lunk starts to say that uh, none of the gum is for number one, but number one takes advantage of this to reach into Lunk's mouth and grab the gum out of his mouth. Ugh. Although we do find out that this actually isn't ordinary gum. It's actually Kids Next Door 2x4 technology called gumbo. This gumbo can take on any form, and so number one uses the gumbo to uh, form a key so he can unlock his... Uh, his cell and afterwards number one uses the gumbo to turn into rope to swing through the detention sector and number one is able to successfully escape from the detention sector much to the anger of runt meanwhile in the fourth grade class president office we see the delightful children have uh, have formed a meeting with the first grade second grade and third grade class presidents. Um, the first grade class president is Simi from Operation Rabbit. 
Later on in the episode, um, the second grade class president's name is revealed to be Polly. The third grade class president, and the fifth grade class president for that matter, don't have their names revealed in this episode. So the delightful children are holding this meeting because the first, second, and third grade class presidents have uh, surrendered, but this is because the delightful children have uh, set up some of their minions to block off the entrances to the cafeteria so that the first, second, and third graders can't get into the cafeteria so that the uh, class presidents will be forced to surrender. But the delightful children start to monologue about how this is a good thing that all of the, um, all of the students of Gulliger Elementary School are now united under a single leader. Well, actually five, because the delightful children are five kids, but you get the idea. <laughs> but in any case, yes, the delightful children claim that with all the students under their, the delightful children's, uh, 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 yes, uh, with all the students uh, being led by the delightful children, the delightful children declare that Gulliger Elementary School will be powerful enough to take on Hendry Middle School. So next up, we see the uh, students of Gulliger Elementary School are preparing uh, to fight Hendry Middle School, which is getting closer to them. And uh, many of the students are nervous about this, and the four present Sector V operatives comment about how unwise it is to try and uh, fight Hendry Middle School. The technology that the elementary school students have available are rather rudimentary compared to the... Um, uh, the more sophisticated technology of the middle school students. Um, uh, they only have access to bikes, trikes, uh, and scooters, and some very um, rudimentary 2x4 technology weapons. So um, it definitely looks like that the elementary school students won't be winning. But the Sector V operatives present still try to cheer up and assure um, the other students not to be worried, although number four's attempts to raise uh, morale end up doing more harm than good or cause more nervous and panic reactions than any uh, helpful reactions. So we see the delightful children are watching the preparations and then they hear from someone uh, that they're receiving a call. So the delightful children are preparing to answer the call and demand that they are left alone for this call. So the individual who told them about the call leaves, but we see a shadowy figure, a familiar shadowy figure, sneaking into the office before the door closes. Uh, the delightful children begin to, um, or yes, the delightful children accept this video call. It is a video call. And we see that they're receiving a call from a middle school student from Hendry Middle School. The student is none other than Chad Dixon, the former number 274. Uh, the call reveals to us that, um, that the delightful children cheating to win the election for fourth grade class president was part of a plan with Chad. This plan was that um, the delightful children would, um, yes, the plan f was for the delightful children to uh, cheat their way to winning the election for fourth grade class president and get the other grades to surrender so that they will control all of the students and force them to fight Hendry Middle School. The intent, though, is that, yes, uh, the delightful children are fully aware of the fact that uh, the elementary school students are at a disadvantage compared to the middle school students when it comes to technology, and the intent is for the elementary school students to be defeated by the middle school students and the elementary school students will become the servants of the middle school students. This was the plan they agreed with with Chad. And the delightful children are eager to hear that, uh, that they, the delightful children, will get promoted to the eighth grade uh, for their part in uh, pretty much uh, giving, um, giving up their fellow elementary school students. Yes, the delightful children are hoping that um, by... Uh, by selling out their fellow elementary school students, they, the delightful children, will be promoted to the eighth grade. Chad says that uh, they they will be promoted to the eighth grade as long as the kids next door don't interfere with this plan. So after the call ends, the delightful children begin to monologue to themselves about how their plan is working and and how 
uh, by being promoted to the eighth grade, the delightful children will be that much closer to achieving what they call glorious adulthood. But then the delightful children realize that the speaker is on and the students heard every word of the delightful children's monologue. They see that number one is in the office. He turned on the speaker and exposed the delightful children's uh, uh, cheating in the election. The hall monitors uh, drag the delightful children away while the delightful children declare vengeance against number one. But uh, the students soon hear that Hendry Middle School is getting closer to them and they're starting to uh, panic some more. The four present sector, or yes, the four other Sector V operatives try to calm the students down, but nothing seems to be working. So number one is, or yes, but number one is able to get their attention. Number one comments about how he's not going to let the middle schoolers uh, make him or his fellow elementary school students into servants. Um, he says that, um, that he's not going to give up without a fight, or he intends to fight against uh, against the um, against the against the middle school students, and he does manage to convince the um, elementary school students to fight back. So number one declares battle stations not for the kids next door, but for Gulliger Elementary School. The next scene takes us to Hendry Middle School, where we see Chad is in a classroom watching as the middle school gets closer to the elementary school. Another teen ninja uh, walks up to Chad and comments about how they are getting closer to the elementary school and adds that the delightful children were right about the inferior technology of the elementary school students. Chad and the other teen ninja are gloating about this, but then they're interrupted by their teacher, Mrs. Vanderbon. Uh, yes, Mrs. Vanderbon uh, tells uh, Chad and the other teen ninja that she would rather um, she'd rather that they talk about uh, taking over elementary schools after class is over. So Chad and the other teen ninja agree to do so and sit back in their. Um, they sit back into their um, seats. Oh, and they're still wearing their battle-ready armor in the middle of class. But anyway, um, yes, we see the uh, Gulliger Elementary School students are on their bikes, trikes, and scooters, and they're all heading for um, for the middle school to try and uh, fight off the invasion. Um, the Sector V operatives were able to try and... Um, uh, improve the technology so that they would be up to fighting performance, essentially. And um, we do see, um, yes, uh, number four is the only Sector V operative who isn't on his own uh, bike, trike, or scooter. He's in. He's riding in the basket of number three's uh, of number three's vehicle. And um, number four comments about how even though they only, how are they going to defeat the middle school since they only had a few minutes to get the, um, yes, number four points out that they only had a few minutes to get the uh, technology up to fighting performance. But number two tells number four that um, every middle school has a weakness, and he was able to um, uh, pinpoint the location of this weakness to all of the tracking devices of all the vehicles of all the elementary school students. So, um, yes, uh, so number one then uh, checks in, or he tries to get, see if everyone is standing by for the attack. So, um, yes, the first grade, second grade, third grade, and fifth grade class presidents all report in on behalf of the grades that they're the class presidents for and saying that they're ready for the, um, uh, for the attack. Um, while they're getting closer, or yes, in Hendry Middle School, uh, one of the teen ninjas tells Chad about how it looks like the Gulliger Elementary School students are putting up more of a fight than they anticipated. So Chad says that he's going to use his teen ninja bike to fight back, and uh, he's preparing. Uh, yeah, he's preparing to enter the battle. So we do see some of the teen ninjas are preparing to fight with their own teen ninja bikes. So it is quite a chaotic battle to say the least. Uh, there's a lot going on, and eventually, eventually though, um, yes, uh, the fifth grade, third grade, second grade, and first grade uh, presidents and uh, some of their students are all hit with attacks by the Teen Ninja bikes, so they uh, are no longer able to continue the attack. 
Eventually, though, number one, uh, number two, number three, and number four manage to get into the middle school, and they try to make progress towards the weak point of the middle school. But eventually, Chad and two other teen ninjas arrive to attack them. Uh, number three and number four are knocked out first, and number two is slowly... Or yes, number two's vehicle is progressively being destroyed, but number two still tries to cover for number one for as long as he can. But eventually, number two is able to... Or yes, number two can't uh, uh, stay in the battle for too long, but number two does manage to take out the two other teen ninjas with Chad. Uh, so Chad and number one are the only ones left, while number one hurries down the hallway... Number one, or yes, we find out that the weak spot of Hendry Middle School is the principal office. Principal Hendry, um, yes, Principal Hendry's office is the weak point. And uh, Chad is nervous about this, but is more determined to try and stop number one. Number one does manage to launch a tennis ball towards the office door, but it doesn't seem to do anything, and number one turns away. However, Chad's Teen Ninja bike ends up slipping on this uh, tennis ball, and the Teen Ninja bike Chad is in crashes into Principal Hendry's office. Outside of the, um, yes, outside of the middle school, we see an explosion, and we hear Principal Hendry, even though we don't see him, we hear him uh, yelling about the uh, bike in his office. And, yes, uh, the, the middle school actually starts to head yeah it starts to head up vertically while it's being destroyed or uh, exploding and eventually though number one is the only one left in the middle school of the elementary school students but he is eventually able to uh, escape and uh, before the explosions complete and after he makes it out um, yes um, the elementary school students all uh, pick number one up and carry him away celebrating uh, their victory over Hendry Middle School. Meanwhile, we head back to Gulliger Elementary School. Or yes, we're back at Gulliger Elementary School now. We're in the auditorium, and number one is giving a speech about how it is an honor for him to win the election for the fourth grade class president. But then Wilson uh, admits to number one that he lied about number one being the winner of the election. Uh, number one didn't really win the election. Uh, Wilson just lied about number one's victory so that he, Wilson, could escape from detention. Wilson then reveals that the true winner of the fourth grade class president election is Egbert Eggleston. Or yeah, Egbert Eggleston uh, is the true winner for the fourth grade class president office. Number one is baffled by this and he questions who would vote for Egbert. And uh, we see the four other Sector V operatives give uh, expressions that suggest they voted for Egbert rather than number one. The episodes end with a campaign commercial for Egbert. Um, yes, that's how we end this episode. So there you go. This was the second episode of season five, and it's season five's second full episode. So the second overall episode and second full episode of season five is this episode. And this episode does continue from the events of Operation Snowing, revealing to us how, um, yes, revealing to us that now that the office of fourth grade class president became vacant uh, after Jimmy was defeated and taken to the Arctic base prison, um, yes, a new fourth grade class president had to be decided. And funny enough, I did mention before in the recap and thoughts video for Operation Snowing that Operation of, yes, Operation Snowing was a major um, parody, affectionate parody or affectionate homage for the Star Wars movies. Uh, more specifically, um, Operation Snowing was mostly inspired by Episode Five, The Empire Strikes Back, and Operation Elections also could be seen as an episode long parody or an an affectionate parody or an affectionate homage for um, Star Wars. In this case, the main inspiration for this episode was episode four, A New Hope, but there were some scenes that also referenced episode six, Return of the Jedi. But yes, it seemed A New Hope was the main uh, inspiration for this episode. So yes, um, we do see that um, 
While number one did run in the election for the position of fourth grade class president, he ended up not winning the election. Egbert ended up winning. Egbert was a background character who appeared as early as uh, season one. Operation Zoo, if I'm not mistaken, was his first appearance, uh, if we're talking cameo background appearances. So Egbert has now become the fourth grade class president. And yeah, the expressions of the four other Sector V operatives indicate that uh, they didn't vote for number one. That's got a sting. <laughs> I imagine that stings quite a bit for number one. Having said that, though, number one will have a chance to uh, get a feel for the role of a president. Uh, that's my little hint. I don't want to give too much away for the sake of those just following along with these recap and thoughts videos, but... Um, there's a, there's a full episode in season six that relates to this hint that I'm mentioning. So um, keep that in the back of your mind. If you don't know what's to come in the later entries of the series, just keep that detail in the back of your mind uh, until we reach that recap and thoughts video eventually. So otherwise, um, this episode, um, I guess the other big detail for this episode is Oh, that's right, the Six Gum Gang. So the Six Gum Gang got a major role in this episode. Uh, the last time was, I believe, their first major role, Operation Robbers, all the way back in Season 3. And um, yes, Lunk is shown to be not delightfulized in this episode. Now, he wasn't delightfulized in Operation Nugget either, although Operation Nugget might have possibly been a... Yes, Operation Nugget might have possibly been a dream sequence, so at least Lunk not being delightfulized in there could be explained by the dream se the possible dream sequence of that uh, segment. But in this episode, yes, Lunk is not delightfulized anymore like he was in Operation Fountain. But at the same time, it was established that delightfulization could be reversed. So it is safe to say that Lunk was eventually uh, de-delightfulized after a certain uh, point sometime after Operation Fountain. And uh, what else can we say? Oh yes, um, we did get to see the return of Simi, the first grade class president. So we got to see that, yes, he's the first grade class president. This is the episode that explicitly reveals him to be the first grade class president. And we also do get to meet the second grade class president, the third grade class president, and the fifth grade class president. So we got to see a little bit more of uh, uh, more about Gulliger Elementary School, and I did like uh, having a little more insight about uh, how Gulliger Elementary School's uh, uh, systems or hierarchy uh, function. And we did get to meet another Kids Next Door operative, number one fifty an hour, um, and he's very he's supposed to be very skilled when it comes to being a lawyer. Unfortunately, he never got the chance to actually demonstrate those skills because of um, the kangaroo court that the delightful children were the judge or judges for. And um, yes, I guess the other big detail is the introduction of the fourth grade secretary, um, Wilson Woodrow. Um, yes, Wilson, Wid Wilson Woodrow was introduced in this episode and well, he didn't leave a very good first impression, to say the least. Uh, yeah, it, number one did point out that it was pretty unwise of Wilson, or Wilson said he admits that it was foolish of him to trust the delightful children to keep their promise of sharing their birthday cake with him uh, if he agreed to uh, uh, let the delightful children cheat to victory. So that definitely, uh, uh, yeah, from what I remember, uh, the fans that I do remember seeing reactions to in the past weren't too fond of Wilson uh, because of him allowing the delightful children to cheat and not thinking that the delightful children would betray him, which they did end up doing. And then later on, we find out that Wilson lied to number one again, that number one really wasn't the winner. He just lied so he could get out of detention. So yeah, while... With regards to uh, major characters or the more well-known characters, Lizzie is usually considered the scrappy of the show, um, a character who's very disliked by uh, fans, although Lizzie does have her fans too, I should mention. Um, yes, uh, Lizzie's more of a base-breaking character, I would say, but yes, because I would consider Lizzie to be more of a base-breaking character, Wilson strikes me more along the lines, or I do consider... 
yes, I consider Wilson to be more the scrappy, or to me, he's the scrappy anyway. And I do remember some fans weren't fond of Wilson either, so I'm not really sure about if Wilson really is uh, generally disliked by fans or not. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if it's a, it's a vocal minority. Um, uh, hard to say, but I can say for myself, I wasn't very fond of Wilson uh, Woodrow in this episode. And I think he gets at least one more appearance in the show. We'll talk about that appearance when we eventually get to that entries recap and thoughts video. Um, oh, I guess, yeah, the other big detail for this episode would be uh, number 274, Chad Dixon's uh, appearance, and how Chad and the delightful children were in an alliance with each other. Yes, they were in an alliance with each other. And um, yes, it stands out because the delightful children and Chad uh, would would be considered some of the main villains of the uh, series, but they also would be considered arch enemies for number one. Yes, they do oppose uh, the Sector V operatives and the Kids Next Door organization. Yes, they do. Yes, they antagonize the Kids Next Door organization collectively, and they may focus on Sector V more often than not. But at the same time, the delightful children and Chad would be considered more so number one's arch enemies uh, compared to any other kids next door operative. Chad and the delightful children do tend to single number one out the most with regards to their antagonism towards the kids next door. So it was definitely, um, I definitely found that interesting seeing some of number one's arch enemies uh, uh, cooperating with each other. And um, what else? Or, or yes, Chad's uh, role in this episode also takes an interesting turn when you take an account when you take into account a detail about Chad that will be revealed later on. It won't be until the end of season six or last uh, episode of season six, not the last entry of the series. So we'll cross that bridge when we eventually get to it. But yes, Chad got to be in a major role again after season three. He had some cameo appearances in season four, but he never really got to be the main villain of any entry during season four. And like I said, it was interesting seeing Chad and the delightful children work together because of their particular animosities towards number one. And um, what else can we say? Um, actually, yeah, that might be about it for this particular episode. So yes, this was a number one spotlight appearance and it was another parody or affectionate homage to uh, uh, Star Wars and uh, there's actually going to be a third entry that's very inspired by Star Wars and it'll be in season five too. It's also going to be another full episode so we'll cross that bridge when we eventually get to it. But for now yes um, that was definitely a lot to talk about for this episode. Um, it did deal with um, some changes in status quo and uh, the consequences of previous important episodes. So yeah, there was definitely a lot to talk about, but we've talked about them now. So there you go. As of this video, we've now discussed episode 54 of Codename Kids Next Door on this channel. Take care and until next time.